Clearly, the collecting of photographs is coming of age. But it's only been in the last few years that the demand has pushed prices up to current high levels, and indications are that the process is just beginning. Photography is the youngest of the arts. The technology was developed in the middle of the 19th century and has only recently achieved wide acceptance as a legitimate art form. Perhaps more people are collecting photographs today because their prices are still comparatively lower than those of the more traditional art forms like painting and sculpture. Or perhaps television, movies, and magazines have created a generation oriented toward the photographic image. Whatever the cause, the photo market is booming and the value of photographic masterpieces seems to have no limit. However, the beginning collector faces many bewildering questions, and although the situation demands a great deal of investigation, a good way to begin is by visiting a gallery that specializes in photo images. Mr. Roberts, these are the Sutcliffe photos that I was telling you about that I have an opportunity to buy, and I'd very much like your opinion on them. I love them. I'm very impressed with them, but I don't really know anything about them. Can you tell me something about Sutcliffe? Certainly, Sutcliffe. Uh, it's Frank Sutcliffe, isn't it? Right, mm -hmm. Frank Meadow Sutcliffe. Was a uh, photographer uh, active from 1875 to 1922. Uh, he's British, and he was active around the port of Whit Whitby in England. Oh, this is beautiful. This is a beautiful print. These prints are albumin prints. The paper is coated with egg white. The, this type of thing was what he used for his commercial work, like his portraits, his uh, five, seven contacts. This is a, what's called a, a Sudcliffe display print. These are the things that he did, uh, his personal expression. They were done strictly for himself. They, they appeared in exhibitions later on, but I mean, these weren't done for exhibitions. These were done strictly for himself. This is a gorgeous print. This is a really a gorgeous print. Are these prints valuable? The market for Sutcliffe is really starting to develop now. And that's, that's because there's suddenly a, an increased interest in his work. Uh, what's happened is uh, 19th century photography is, was real big. Everybody's bought up the vintage prints. There are, just aren't a lot of vintage prints around. I think the most important thing when you're collecting prints is you have to establish whether you're collecting them for investment or you're collecting them for your personal enjoyment or possibly a combination of the two. Then once you've decided that, then my thinking is I'm, I'm not a big fan of collecting for investment, for strictly investment potential, because there's a lot of images that I'm not particularly fond of that command some very high prices. And there's some that I am fond of and command some high prices. Uh, my thinking is you have to love the image. I think that's important. I think you have to really like the image. and just about anything you buy from the 19th century has got some investment potential. I'm going to be investing a fair amount of money if I buy these prints. Do you suggest um, that I stick per with one man like Sutcliffe or with old masters of a similar style, or do you think I should branch out in many different areas? What do you suggest? You've got a nice start. You've got a beautiful start for a collection. But I don't think you should necessarily lock, your into, lock yourself into just Sutcliffe's or just vintage prints. I think you should, I think what's got to be the, the mandate is what you like. I think that should, uh, I think you should buy what you like. 19th century is always a good investment. Even the unknowns now are getting prices that uh, a few years ago were tough to sell. But that's what the collector, when the collectors moved into the market, that's where they started. Now they're in the 20th century and they're starting to drive the 20th century prices up. So bearing in mind what type of money you have to spend, uh, I'll tell you, what oftentimes happens is we'll get some people into the gallery and they'll walk through. They've never bought a photograph in their life, possibly a calendar or a picture book. And they'll come through and they'll get the basic exposure to photography and answer a few questions for them, generally pretty intimidated a little bit. And then they'll leave. And I'll see them maybe the following month or a month or two later at the next exhibit. And it's about that point when they're deciding that maybe they should start their collection. They'll buy their first print. And they'll buy their first print, 
and it's a real love affair with them. You know, I, I think the people that buy out of a gallery, a lot of them aren't really too concerned with investment potential. There's really a love affair with that image. They really like it. They'll buy that print, and then they've then a lot in a lot of cases, it's it's the start of a collection. Then pretty soon you see them more often. Suddenly they're they're over that initial shock of paying more than ten, fifteen, or twenty dollars for a photograph. That's a shock a lot of people have to get over. Suddenly they they recognize it as an art form, but when it comes to putting the money out for it, that's the real test. And it's amazing, you know, they'll, they'll buy one print and then suddenly they, they start a collection. They become very discerning. They start reading more about photography, they start looking at more exhibits, and sometimes they'll, they'll isolate one photographer and collect his work, sometimes they, uh, but they live with them. Very few people stick them in a vault, they live with them. They, I'm buying as much as I can right now because I realize a lot of the things I'm buying now I'm not going to be able to afford next year, so, and I cry all the time when I see, look at things I should have bought last year that are now worth twice, sometimes even three times, I can't afford them now. I had a chance to buy a Paul Strand two years ago for $250. There was a little stain in the corner. And that print now is $4,000 with the stain in the corner. I just kicked myself. Oh. So that, that's an exception. That's, that, that vast increase is an exception. But it gives an indication of just what's happening. You'll, you'll notice the same thing with your Sudcliffs. Jim, I'm very excited about what you've told me, and I'm wondering, what should I run out and buy today? Well, the first thing I'd advise you to do would be to get these mounted. I think that's the most important thing. Get these so they're not going to suffer any more damage. How can I keep them in good condition? Well, first thing what we want to do is you want to get uh, acid-free board. That's archival board. It's got no sulfur in it. There's nothing to start an interaction with the print. Uh, and what I would suggest is getting a, a, a uh, archival board that's, uh, this is, looks like about 11 by 14, 16 by 20 board. And then getting the little acid-free corners and hinges, hinging them, not dry mounting this, just, just hinge it. And then putting an overmat, an, uh, an acid-free overmat over it. And what this will do, you want to display them? Yes. Okay, what this will do is this will keep it away from the glass. And then as far as the frame goes, the only thing I want to caution you about when you, once you put it into a frame is not to use any type of ammonia cleaner on the inside of the glass. Use something that, well, there once again, uh, there's a few products on the market that uh, there won't. What happens if you use an ammonia on the glass, you get up, you start an interaction with the print once it's mounted. And uh, just a good glass cleaner with uh, no ammonia. Uh, put it in the frame and keep it out of direct sunlight. Out of direct sunlight. And put them somewhere where you can look at them. Just look at them a lot because they're really beautiful prints.